The movie begins with a woman on a small boat in the middle of the ocean. A large wave approaches her and she uses magic to play her shamisen. The magic splits the wave in half and she safely passes through. While sailing, another wave forms behind her and hits her. She falls into the ocean and hits her head on a rock as the current moves her around. The woman arrives at the shore and hears her baby named Kubo crying. She crawls to Kubo and tries to calm him as he cries. A bandage covers his face because his grandfather took one of his eyes. Kubo wakes up and picks up some scattered paper in the cave. He prepares food and feeds his mother, who has issues with her memories. He plays with some origami, but his mother doesn't respond and he leaves the cave. Kubo leaves the cave and goes to a nearby town. He meets an older woman named Kamiyo, and she asks him to add a fire-breathing chicken to his performance because it's funny. She asks him if he will finish his story and he walks to the middle of the town. Kubo plays his shamisen and attracts the townspeople. He uses his magic to make the origami figures move and talks about a great samurai named Hanzo. He narrates how Hanzo gathered great armor to fight off the Moon King's beasts. The Moon King's beasts attacked Hanzo, but he defeats them. Kubo talks about Hanzo being face to face with the Moon King, and as he's about to continue the story, a bell rings. Kubo ends the story and rushes back to the cave as the townspeople ask him why he doesn't complete his stories. Kubo arrives at the cave, and as the sun sets, his mother regains her senses and Kubo makes food for them. She tells Kubo about Hanzo, his father, and how he was a brave warrior. Kubo's mother tries to complete the story, but she cannot remember what happened, and Kubo asks her what Hanzo was like when he wasn't fighting. She tells Kubo that Hanzo was a nice man and reminds him how much he loved them. He also reminds them that her father, the Moon King, and her sisters are the ones who killed Hanzo and are searching for Kubo. She begs Kubo never to remain outdoors at night, so the Moon King and her sisters don't find him. Kubo promises to return to the cave before the sun sets and to keep Hanzo's robe and a monkey charm on him at all times. Kubo's mother gets tired and Kubo tucks her into bed. That night, Kubo's mother dreams and the paper in the room begins to move around the cave. Kubo calms her and she wakes up. Kubo enters the town the following day and Kamiyo tells him how she loves the festivals. She tells him how the villagers use lanterns to communicate with their dead relatives during the festival and suggests that Kubo does the same. Kubo agrees and rushes to his dad's tomb. He tries to communicate with him but cannot and watches as other families place their lanterns on a river. He gets upset as he cannot communicate with Hanzo and crushes his lantern. The sun sets and Kubo realizes he isn't in the cave. The lanterns on the rivers go out and two strange women appear. They tell Kubo they're his mother's sisters and say they've been searching for him. The sisters who use magic follow Kubo as he runs away and use their magic to try and capture him. Kubo enters the town and warns the townspeople of the sisters and their magic. The sisters enter the town and destroy the buildings as they chase Kubo. Kubo falls to the ground and his mother picks up his shamisen and plays with it. The magic from the shamisen pushes the sisters back and Kubo's mother instructs him to find Hanzo's armor. She uses her magic on his robe and some wings appear. He tries to hold on to her as he flies away and takes a stand of her hair. The wings take Kubo away while his mother fights the sisters. Kubo wakes up in an icy terrain with a talking monkey. Monkey informs him they must find shelter because his enemies are still chasing him. Kubo gets startled but follows the monkey as they take shelter in a dead whale. Monkey makes food from the whale and asks Kubo to eat. She tells Kubo that she's the wooden charm he carries around and that his mother's magic brought her to life. She informs him he will be weak and slow if he does not eat and he agrees to eat the food. Monkey uses his mother's hair to make a bracelet and puts it on Kubo's hand. He asks her if she knows where the armor is and she tells him she does not. Monkey wakes Kubo the next morning and tells him he was talking in his sleep and calling out to his bag. A paper flew out of his bag and folded into an origami samurai. The samurai walks to the exit and points in a certain direction. Kubo realizes the samurai knows where the armor is and they decide to follow him. While walking, Kubo plays with his origami and Monkey scolds him. He annoys her and some origami turns into mosquitoes and tries to poke her butt. But she then catches them. She informs Kubo that he can run out of papers and says he has to learn to concentrate while using his magic. 
Kubo and Monkey continue their journey, but Kubo gets abducted by a strange man and Monkey goes after them. She follows them to a cave and Kubo stops her from attacking, saying that the man they call Beetle isn't trying to hurt him. Beetle says Hanzo is his master and Kubo informs him that Hanzo is his father. Beetle tells them that he was cursed to turn into a beetle and doesn't have any memories of his past. He promises to support Kubo in his quest and shows off his archery skills. The origami samurai Hanzo finds a path in the cave and they follow him. They enter a strange room and see the sword unbreakable, a piece of armor in a giant hand. Beetle retrieves the sword but the hand floats and attaches to a giant skeletal monster. Monkey attacks the skeleton with the sword, but it breaks and they realize it's not the right sword. Hanzo points at the monster's head and they see several swords attached to it. A fight ensues and Kubo gets to its head. He eventually pulls out the correct sword as the monster holds on to Monkey and Beetle and the monster crumbles. Beetle carries the other and flies out of the cave. Kubo plays with the sword while Monkey tends to Beetle's wounds. Monkey and Beetle argue about how they will get across the long lake. And Kubo makes a boat with his magic as he plays his shamisen. They get on the boat and Beetle teaches Kubo how to catch fish with his bow and arrow. They catch some fish and Monkey uses the sword to cut it. Monkey realizes a storm is heading toward them and they realize the second piece of armor, the breastplate, is underwater. Beetle decides to go underwater to retrieve the breastplate. The sisters arrive at the beach where Kubo and the others left, and they split up and go to the armors. Monkey suggests she and Kubo return to shore, but Kubo dives into the water. Monkey tries to dive into the water, but one of the sisters stops her by dragging her onto the boat. A fight ensues while Kubo gets to the armor, but some giant eyeballs hypnotize him. The sister tells Monkey how Kubo's mother betrayed her when she fell in love with Hanzo, and Monkey instructs Beetle to help Kubo. The eyes show Kubo that Monkey is his mother and he passes out as he falls into a giant mouth. Beetle emerges and shoots his arrows at the eyes as he swims towards Kubo. Monkey fights the sister and gets injured. The sister says that Kubo's mother's love made her weak, but Monkey informs her that the love made her stronger as she vanquishes the sister. Beetle emerges with Kubo and Monkey tends to him. He regains his consciousness and restores the boat. They go to a cave and Kubo asks Monkey about her story. She tells Kubo and Beetle that her father sent her and her sisters to kill Hanzo. Monkey says she left the heavens and arrived at the temple before her sisters where Hanzo was. She fights Hanzo and while fighting Hanzo tells her that she is his quest. And she falls in love with him. The Moon King found them after Kubo was born and Hanzo sacrificed himself to fight the Moon King and let Kubo and his mother escape. Kubo wonders why the Moon King hates him and Monkey says he doesn't hate Kubo but wants to make Kubo like him. Kubo goes to bed and Monkey realizes he's exhausted. Beetle sees that Monkey is injured and asks why she didn't tell Kubo who she was. Monkey informs Beetle that the magic keeping her alive is fading and will be gone soon. She feels bad because Kubo will be left alone. Beetle says he'll protect Kubo, and her story will live on because Kubo will tell it to everyone. As Kubo sleeps, he meets the Moon King in his dreams, and the Moon King shows him Hanzo's fortress. Kubo realizes the last piece of the armor is in the temple, and he wakes up. Kubo wakes Beetle and Monkey and tells them he knows where the helmet is. They leave the cave and follow him as he takes them on a journey to the fortress. They watch as some birds fly and sing, and Monkey tells them the superstition of how the birds carry souls to their destinations. They arrive at the fortress and enter the building. Kubo realizes the fortress is where Hanzo and his men prepared for their quest, and Beetle says he remembers the castle. Kubo steps onto the courtyard and they get attacked by the second sister. The sister traps Kubo and the others with her magic and reveal that Beetle is Hanzo, who they cursed and stripped of his memories. She throws Beetle through a wall and as she tries to attack Kubo, he hits her with his shamisen pick and frees himself. Monkey fights the sister and the sister uses her injury against her. She's about to kill Monkey when Beetle throws a sword at her and knocks her out. Kubo holds Monkey and Beetle promises to take care of Kubo as he holds her hand. The sister stabs Beetle and kills him. Kubo grabs the shamisen as the sister is about to kill Monkey and uses its magic to defeat her. The sun rises and the origami points at a paper. Kubo realizes the helmet is in the town he lived in and he uses the magic to create wings and flies there. Kubo arrives at the destroyed town and retrieves the helmet which was used as a bell. He informs the townspeople they must leave because the Moon King is on his way. The townspeople leave and Kubo puts on the helmet, completing the armor. 
Kubo summons the Moon King and he appears. The Moon King informs Kubo that he wants to take his second eye because he wants Kubo to live with him in the heavens and not on Earth. Kubo rejects the Monkey King's offer and says he killed his family. The Moon King offers him immortality in heavens, but Kubo refuses, saying his story will end by killing the Moon King. The Moon King gets angry and transforms into a giant monster. Kubo strikes him with the sword multiple times, but the Moon King grabs him and throws him into the forest. Kubo gets up and uses his and his mother's hair as a string for his shamisen. He takes off the armor and plays the shamisen. It lights up the lanterns on the river, and he tells the Moon King that his memories are the most powerful type of magic. The magic shows that deceased people's souls, and the townspeople stand behind their deceased relatives. Kubo forms a force field around them and uses magic to transform the Moon King into a human. The Moon King wakes up with no memories and asks Kubo for help. The townspeople tell the Moon King that he's a nice man and tell him that they love him. Kameo tells him that Kubo is a storyteller and Kubo decides to tell him some stories. Kubo places a lantern for his parents on the river and their spirits hold on to him as the lanterns float away. The end. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out these other videos and make sure to subscribe and tap that bell icon to be notified about our latest videos. We'll see you next time.